We are down to the final stretch of the MLB 2024 regular season. The Mariners are currently 73 and 72 through 145 games, 17 games remaining, just over two and a half weeks left in the regular season. The Mariners starting rotation this year, arguably the best in baseball, for sure the best in franchise history. The Mariners offense, one of the worst in baseball, but hold on, things might be changing. Today, we're going to get into the impact that Mariners Hall of Famer Edgar Martinez has had on this clubhouse, on this offense, since he was hired as the hitting coach just over two and a half weeks ago. And spoiler alert, the Mariners have been the best offense in baseball over the past 15 days. I don't believe you. We're also going to cover exactly what the Mariners need to do over these next two and a half weeks in order to make the postseason. And we're going to take a look back at the 1995 Mariners to show the deficit that they overcame in order to make the postseason for the first time in franchise history. The Seattle Mariners are nowhere near out of this playoff race, no matter how many people have thrown up the white flag and said otherwise, which includes me. But before we get into it, a little real talk with myself. You might have noticed that over the past month or so, I haven't made a ton of Mariners content. You might have noticed that I changed my Couch GM logo from the, the baseball version to the football version last week. Some of you have been asking about it, so I wanted to answer that question. Yes, I will still be making baseball content, but over the past couple weeks, I certainly have shifted my focus to football over baseball, specifically the Mariners. Because with myself, as I'm sure it is with a lot of you guys, when the Mariners are performing to a level that is borderline infuriating at times to where they have this amazing starting rotation, the offense is bottom of the barrel. You have to choose where you're going to be spending your time. I have a full-time job, as do you, and I only have so many hours in the day to be able to create content, and it's very hard for me to create negative content in general. Most, if not all, of the content that I put out there is optimistic and uplifting, and over the past month to two months, you could really say that there isn't very much positive that you could be focusing on with the Mariners outside of the starting rotation. And with that being the case, I did shift my focus over the past couple weeks to football during that A's series when the Mariners dropped below 500 for the first time in it seemed like forever this year. I changed my Couch GM logo to the Couch GM football logo, decided to start making some football content, take my mind off of, the, off of this Mariners team, and hopefully make some content that's positive, uplifting, and informative about the teams that I care about the most in the WC Cougars, the Seattle Seahawks. Sorry, not sorry to you Washington Huskies fans. It's Apple Cup week. Go Cougs. When you wake up, it's Apple Cup week. Yeah! But now with where the Seattle Mariners are currently at, it's time to get cautiously optimistic and take a look at some positives on where the Mariners have been trending these past few weeks, and hopefully we can see them playing some October baseball. All that being said, thank you so much everyone for your support to this point. We just passed 10,000 subscribers last night. That is a huge milestone. The connections I've been able to make through this, the relationships I've been able to build, I know that this is all just the beginning and I really can't thank you enough. That being the case, the best thing that you could do to help myself, the brand, and what I'm doing is to remember me when you're looking to buy, sell, or refinance any properties in the Pacific Northwest. I'm a full-time mortgage broker during the day. You can visit brokerconnorweb.com. I also have my contact information in the description of this video if you'd like to get in touch and have a conversation. And with that, let's get into it. Coming into the season, we knew that the Mariners starting rotation was going to be one of the best in baseball, potentially the best in franchise history. That has been confirmed, and so far this year, the top four guys in the rotation, Luis Castillo, George Kirby, Logan Gilbert, and Bryce Miller, have all contributed at least 161 innings apiece, with Brian Wu coming in at 99 innings pitched so far this year, and all five guys in the rotation, the highest ERA out of all of them is Luis Castillo at a 3.64, the highest whip out out of all of them is a 1.17. And when you start to dive into it, technically Brian Wu, their number five pitcher right now, he has a 2.36 ERA on the season, a 0.85 whip, and a 204 batting average against. That is technically their number five pitcher. Logan Gilbert leads all of baseball with his 0.88 whip. Bryce Miller is fifth in all of baseball with his 0.99 whip. Then you get to the offensive side of the ball and it's a different story. The Mariners lead all of baseball with 1,470 strikeouts on the year through 145 games. That is an average of 10.13 strikeouts as a team per game. They have the lowest batting average in all of baseball at a 220 team batting average. Still currently on the year, they are 25th in all of baseball in OPS with a 677 team OPS. They are 19th in baseball in on-base percentage with a 307 on-base, and their slug is 28th with a 370 slug. But then you look over just the past 15 days, and the Mariners have been one of the best offenses in all of baseball, which was completely shocking to me once I saw this stat. Over the past 15 days, the Mariners have an 812 OPS, which is second only to the Arizona Diamondbacks. And over the past 15 days, the Mariners weighted runs created plus per fan graphs 
is at a 135, which leads all of baseball. That is six points higher than the Arizona Diamondbacks. So the Mariners are somehow going from being a bottom three offense in all of baseball on the year to being the best offense in all of baseball over this short sample. So what the heck is going on? And before I get further, yes, I understand they haven't been winning as many games as they're needing to over this stretch. They are four and six over their last 10 games, even with this top offense right now. But even with that being the case, this trend with their offense is extremely encouraging, especially for these last 17 games coming up of the season. So what changed? Well, Dan Wilson replaced Scott Service as the head coach and Edgar Martinez has replaced Jared DeHart as the hitting coach. In this article released by Daniel Kramer of MLB.com the other day, the headline states, I'm happy that he's on our side, Mariners lineup feeling Edgar's impact. So let's see what exactly is the Edgar effect. This article states that when Edgar Martinez took over as the Mariners head coach a little over two weeks ago, he made it clear that his most paramount emphasis would be on simplicity. Julio is quoted saying, I feel like a lot of us are all really young, even though we have different ages, but the experience that Edgar brings to the table every single night, it's so much. I'm happy that he's on our side, really happy. This article was released after a 10-4 win in St. Louis in which the Mariners finished with 13 total hits, marking the fourth time in their past five games that they've had more than 10 hits, each of which came with a win. And as this article states, most of the players are tying the results back to Edgar Martinez. Again, Rodriguez says about Edgar, he's somebody that had done it at the highest level against the best competition. And he was a DH who was a really smart hitter, and it's something that I feel like we all appreciate. We are in a world and a state of baseball right now that is very analytics focused, a ton of data, information overload and people in general let alone baseball players can allow this to get to them and become analysis paralysis edgar as far as analytics says that he doesn't look at it that much i mean for me batting average runs scored rbis on base percentage those are the ones i look at the other ones exit velocity launch angle i don't care if you have an exit velocity of 120 miles an hour but if you have the wrong swing you're going to hit for a low average and the production is not going to be that great kramer notes that martinez over his career slashed a remarkable 312 batting average a 418 on base percentage a 515 slug which is a career 933 ops over his 18 year career, which was all spent in Seattle. Yet even though he's now 20 years removed from his playing days, he still draws on many of the things that made him successful. Edgar states, because the game today is so mechanical, there's so much emphasis on mechanics that sometimes the hitters are thinking too much in mechanics when they should be thinking about the focus on a plan and approach and just squaring the ball up. Not where my hands are, all this stuff and mechanics. When you think too much about mechanics, it can be difficult to hit the baseball. It's difficult enough to hit a 95 mile an hour fastball with the insane breaking stuff that guys have today. Let yourself get in your head while you're at the plate and it's game over. JP Crawford also had some high praise and here's what he was quoted saying. I think collectively over the last couple months, we were going in with a plan that was way too complicated. And these last couple weeks, we've simplified everything and are just getting back to just trusting yourself. So clearly Edgar's input and the Edgar effect is doing the trick. I'm curious to hear from some of the players and from Edgar himself as to what exactly the changes are, what the approach at the plate should be. If it's just something like the fundamentals of trying to hit a line drive over the pitcher's head, but now taking things back to 1995 when the Mariners made the playoffs for the first time in franchise history. In the 1995 season, Edgar Martinez had the best year of his career. He finished the season playing in 145 games. He batted 356 with a 479 on base percentage, a 1.107 OPS, which is a 185 OPS plus. He was 85% better than the average league hitter. And as we all know from that iconic clip during the 1995 ALDS against the Yankees in Seattle, it was Edgar Martinez who hit that walk-off double down the line in left field to win the game and send the Mariners to the ALCS. The Mariners in the 1995 season were down by as many as 13 games in the division in early August. They were able to make a comeback from early August to late September, make up that 13-game deficit, end up tying the Angels for first place in the division, winning a one-game playoff, and beating the Angels for first place in the division, sending them to the playoffs for the first time in franchise history. The Mariners' magic winning percentage in the 1995 season was 54.5%. The Mariners currently are four and a half games back from the Astros in the AL West. They are four games back from the Twins in the wild card. The Mariners have one of the best rotations in baseball. Yes, Luis Castillo just went down with a hamstring strain. He was just put on the 15 day IL, which will likely end his regular season. But with the right voice being in the clubhouse now in Edgar Martinez and Dan Wilson, if this offensive surge continues through the remainder of the regular season, that means the Mariners will be playing October baseball. And the hero from 
the 1995 season just might be the hero of the 2024 season. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Again, I would say cautiously optimistic, but we're trending more towards optimistic with looking at these numbers. Make sure to like and subscribe to the Couch GM to stay up to date on all things Seattle Mariners, Washington State University Cougars, Seattle Seahawks, and much more. Thank you for watching and go check out this video right here.